what am I picking up? Oh, I know what this is. <laughs> okay. I don't know how this one survived so long, but it's time to say adieu to Rose and Dragon. Right, Sammy? <laughs>
particularly if you're going out in a big group or going out to dinner because it is called Atomic Rose for a reason. It's very, very strong. So whenever anybody comes into my little scent zone, they just comment on how good I smell. So yeah, I'm real happy I picked this one up. The next one is one I've been waiting for for two months, kind of got lost on a sea turtle um, from Europe on its way to me. And I initially heard, this is Musk Therapy by, um, by Nisio, and I initially was introduced to this. I had heard about it and I really didn't want to smell it. I didn't want to fall in love with it. And um, my new friend Susan out in New York, we have met, um, we met over YouTube. And we do these little sample swaps and she sent me, she sent me like a little sample gift basket. And then one of them was bus therapy and I just thought, what the heck, I'm going to give it a go. And you know, I was just smitten from the get go. It, ah, oh, I really, really love this fragrance. And yeah, I was just, I kind of needed to get a bottle. I love this. So I'm super happy that it finally made its way to me. Oh my gosh, this is a creamy, clean musk with some floral and citrusy notes. I know that there's black currant in here, um, probably bergamot, but a real pretty black currant bergamot note to begin with. I just love it. The florals in here, I think there's magnolia, and of course there's that hedione in here, which works its magic, I don't know. It's just gorgeous. Love this fragrance, it has excellent longevity, and I am super thrilled that this finally got into my hot little hands. The next pickup is because my new YouTube and Instagram friend, Dorte Thomas said, you need to get this one, you're really gonna like it. By the way, I will link her Instagram account below. She has a phenomenal Instagram account, and I love seeing her adventures and her beautiful photos that she posts every day. They're unbelievable, so if you get a chance, pop on her Instagram account. Anyways, the one she said that I need to pick up is by M. Mikalef, and it is called Patchouli, and she was right. Of course, I am a big patchouli lover, and I really love this patchouli. I've been really enjoying it. Um, this is a little bit earthy and a little bit smoky, almost a touch incense-y, but it dries down really sweet and powdery. There is vanilla, there's amber, and there's a little violet in here, which I think gives it a little bit of a powderiness. Um, this is a patchouli that I can actually probably wear to work. I haven't yet. I've kind of worn it um, around the house and out and about. I tend not to wear patchouli-based fragrances to work because they can be strong, but this is one that I think I can actually get away with. It's not overpowering, and the projection is quite mild. So, Dorote, thank you so much. I am super happy with this one. The next one is another one from the house of M. Mikalef, and it is called Royal Rose Oud. And I have a lot of rose oud combinations, but I wanted something that was kind of like a spicy rose with oud that was lighter, that was something I might be able to wear in the warmer months. And this is, I was pretty happy with this one. Um, this one is a lighter rose oud fragrance. It does have some spices in it but somehow it just reads light to me. Um, there's musk and some fruity notes from, I believe it's black currant. I think this one has black currant in it too. Um, I definitely smell saffron in this, gives it a spiciness, but there's just the way it's composed, it's very, very light. It's kind of sparkly, I would say. It does lean feminine and it's really, really fresh, refreshing and a very versatile. Fragrance, yeah, I can see myself wearing this in a lot of different circumstances, so I'm really glad I picked this one up as well. So yes, I bought a cupcake, not just one, but I bought a couple. The um, I've always wanted to try the House of Siage, but the, the price point was a little bit prohibitive, and I remember seeing the House of Siage years and years ago at kind of an upscale 
um, department store in Chicago, and I think the ones I was looking, the ones that I were was looking at, they were very, very ornate and on the higher end, and my eyes kind of bulged out, and I remember thinking, yeah, maybe the House of Siage isn't for me. <laughs> But um, I've seen a couple people talk about it. I've seen Greta Beth kind of talk about them, and it kind of, you know, um, got me a little bit more interested. And I also wanted to try their lip products, too. I saw Mel Thompson do a review of the lip products, and I thought, yeah, maybe it's time for me to give it a go, particularly when they're having a special. And they were having this really good special, and I'm not sponsored. I got these myself, but... It was, if you spend a certain amount, you get actually a cupcake and you get like a free lipstick case and it just, I can't remember, like a little discovery set of some sort. So I took the plunge. I bought a couple cupcakes, some lip products, and here we are. So when I, when I opened my box, I will say that it immediately struck me that the House of Siage, they, they just, they do luxury. I mean, um, even... Even the, the presentation, just the box alone, is just gorgeous. I just really felt kind of special opening the box. And I remember thinking, I really want to find a cupcake for somebody in my family, like a sister-in-law or my mom, uh, just for gift giving. I mean, anybody who gets one of these boxes is going to feel like a princess because I know I did when I opened these. And it was even better because I got my cupcakes half off. So this one is Whispers of Time. I mean, just alone, this bottle is so pretty. It's got, you know, the crystals all around on the top. But yeah, so I just picked this one up today and I wore it today. And I remember um, when I sprayed it, immediately thinking, this is Neroli Portofino. This is Neroli Portofino. And it does smell a little bit like one of my Carolina Herrera um, neroli or orange blossom fragrances. It's very, very fresh, but wow. Very, very similar to Tom Ford's Neroli Portofino. I mean, completely. Um, very, very nice and fresh and crisp and zingy. I think there's ginger in here. Anyways, um, but it does that scent profile kind of drives down pretty quickly, about half an hour, and then it does and then it does become like a Fruit Loop type of smell, which I actually find very fun and appealing. It's like Fruit Loops, Cedar, and Vanilla. It, it is fairly on the light side. It's a little bit light and quiet. So at about three to four hours, it becomes a skin scent and you do need spritzing. But I'm telling you, I'm super happy with the deal that I got. So that is Whispers of Time. And the second one that I got here, I've only worn this again, like just the presentation is just, I feel so fancy. This one is Tiara. I've only worn it one time. So I don't have a lot of experience with either of these. I like them both. I'm super happy. Again, um, a super pretty bottle. The juice is darker, so you know that there's going to be some vanilla or vanillin in here. Again, the beautiful crystals. I mean, the, they just know how to do fancy. Um, this one is what I wanted Christian Dior dioramas to be. I really do like the, the, the private line of Christian Dior. There are many, many, many of those um, in that line that I have en uh, enjoyed. I thought I would love diorama or diamor, 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 diamor. Why can't I say that? You know what I'm talking about. I thought I would love that one, and it just was like a cigarette ashtray on me. I couldn't believe it. I kept trying and trying and trying, and it just didn't work for my skin, but this kind of reminds me of Dior Amour. There we go. Now I can say it. Dior Amour. Um, without that cigarette ashtray smell, there it's rose. It's like a rose, a sweet floral. There is rose and peony in here, but I know that there's vanilla. It's powdery. There is some musk in here on the dry down. It's kind of sweet. I think there's some citruses in here and some cinnamon. Uh, not super prominent, but if you're super sensitive to the note of cinnamon, like some of my friends, I'm not going to mention names, Tammy. Um, yeah, you may not like this. 
it's not, I can't pick it up so much, but um, yeah, it's like an ambery, vanilla, powdery, floral. It's on the rich side. I like it. I did wear it one time. It was hot. I liked it. It was pretty. Uh, I want to say I got like four to six hours from it. And this is actually one that I would wear in the wintertime. And I think it's because of the vanilla or the vanillin. So yeah. And then as far as the lip products are concerned, I am wearing, what am I wearing? I haven't even, I just took this out. I, I literally unboxed it about uh, during lunchtime and I haven't even put it in its fancy holder, but I think, is it me or is the writing on everything getting microscopic? Uh, it must be, it must be the writing. Um, Royal Highness. Yeah, Royal Highness. This is a fuchsia pink. I've got it on right now. I put it on right after lunch and I have not refreshed it. I brushed my teeth. I ate and I have been behind the camera sipping on some wine and it does not transfer on the glass. So it's still going strong. It is starting to feel a little bit on the dry side, but so it is, oh my gosh, it's 8.50 p.m. I put this on around 2.30, so it is going strong. I literally have not applied it, have not reapplied. So um, I'm really happy. These are like lip balms. They, I think they're called lip balms, but they are, they act like a lipstick, but they last forever. And I love that they don't get on your teeth either. Um, so yeah, so that is my foray into the House of Siage. I have a couple others that I have not worn that I just picked up. So I don't want to talk about them. I'll talk about them on the next one. So yeah. The next one up is another special one that I have had on my wish list for months and months and months. I got the Fragrance Dubois Discovery set last year in 2020. Unfortunately, I fell in love with several uh, in that Discovery set and have slowly over time been acquiring bottles that I've really wanted, one on that list that I haven't purchased yet. And I was really lucky to get it when Fragrance Buy had their, um, had their recent sale in July, so I scooped it up and this is the um, Oud Rose Intense. I kept it in the box. It's just so pretty. Um, yeah, I've been wanting this for a while, but you know, didn't really feel like the timing was right until it went on sale. This one's a teeny little bottle because it is pricey, but man, do I love this one. Oh, another, I'm a sucker for rose. I do. I love rose. I tend to like roses that have a modern touch to them or a modern flair. And this is a, yeah, this is a gorgeous, and the sprayer on this, the sprayers on this, I don't want to spray my wine, so I'm not going to spray it, are beautiful. The atomizers on the Fragrance Dubois, all of them are phenomenal. But this is a sweet rose oud combination with amber and sandalwood. It is gorgeous. There is something as it dries down that gives it a little greenness, maybe cleanliness. It's a little bit clean in the dry down. It's not soapy. I wouldn't call it soapy. I would call it clean. Yeah, I'm not smelling it now, but I remember smelling it um, on the last couple times I've worn it. And I think it's the geranium in here. I think that's what's giving it that clean scent or profile. Yeah, it is just a touch fruity. I think there's some general fruits in here. And this is a gentle scent. Sometimes I just want to wear a fancy, nice, you know, snazzy scent that is just between me and the fragrance. And it's just kind of like our little secret. And when I wear this. I don't wear it a whole lot. It's mostly been testing it out. I just, I feel super fancy. This is definitely a fragrance that I will be wearing for a fancy night out. You know, I don't go to red carpet events, but um, you know, like fundraisers and stuff like that. That's about as close to red carpet as I get. The next one is by the house of Laurent Mazon, Mazone. And I don't have anything by this house. And I just, I was just shopping and I stumbled upon this one. And this one, I actually blind bought this one. 
but um, it was, I got, a, I picked up a real good deal, and the atomizer on this is really good. I'm not going to spray it. I don't want to spray my wine. But this one is called Cine Day. Cine Day. Cine Day. S-I-N-E-D-I-E. -E. <laughs> Americans would call this Sine Day, but I think this is Cine Day. I don't know what the translation for this is. Anyway, it's an unusual one. Um, this is kind of like a citrusy fig with some sweet amber. There's absolutely some dryness. It's kind of scratchy in the dry down. There's some woody notes to it. I'm not sure what the wood in. It's not oud. It's not oudy. And surprisingly, there's a little bit of leather in here. Not a big fan of leather. It just gives it a little bit of dryness and some warmth. But it's definitely a fruity scent. It's a figgy, fruity scent. And I think I pick up black currant, but I, I, I don't remember that black currant is in here. But it's like a figgy black currant. It's just fresh and sweet and woody and earthy and it's one of the very few kind of fruity fragrance that I would wear in the autumn. It just seems like it would kind of do well in the autumn. So, see me die, see me day. I better get into some declutters before this becomes a marathon. So let, I've got the declutter box right here. So let's pull out, yes, Hugo Boss Deep Red. I have never worn this. I spritzed it once and just wasn't for me. So it just kind of sat on my dresser and never wore it. So it's going bye bye. That's all I want to say about that one. Um, it's not a bad fragrance. It's just not for me. Um, the next one, this is from Bois 1920. I have several fragrances from Bois 1920. I like this house in general. This one is called Ethereus, I believe. And I actually got this for my husband. Um, thinking that it was supposed to be similar to kind of Creed's Virgin Island Water. And it's not. It just isn't. I gave it to him and he said he didn't like it. This just smells interesting. It's very different. Kind of fruity, coconutty, florally with some resins. Um, yeah, it's just this weird mishmash. There's some fresh and fruity notes in here. There's coconut. There's bitter orange, that's what it is. This orange and resin just, I don't know, doesn't go well. There's a floral in here. I'm pretty sure it's ylang ylang. And I like, I generally like ylang ylang in most things, but it just seems out of place. It's a little odd. He didn't like it, so um, yeah. I, and I, it's not for me. So we're gonna say goodbye to this one. This is Ethereos, yes. Um, Am I in the box? Yes, I'm in the box. This one breaks my heart. Totally, totally breaks my heart that I am decluttering this. This one is extremely difficult to find in the States. If you're in Europe, you can find this very easily. And this is called Tendre Madeleine by Le Centures Gourmand. This I bought years and years and years ago. I actually um, sampled uh, Zerjoff's Lira in 2014 when I um, uh, was gifted a membership to a, a niche club, like a scent club, and Lira was one of the first ones I got, and I fell head over heels in love with it, and I bought the small bottle, and I just wore it day after day after day, and I kind of, I think I overdid it, because by the time that I was finished with it, I still liked it a lot, but I not enough to, you know, repurchase a big bottle, repurchase it. And I found this fragrance that I'm telling you smells 80 to 90 percent like Lyra. So I, I really didn't want to wear Lyra a whole lot at that time, but I thought maybe if I really missed smelling like that, smelling like an orange lemon pound cake, cookie cupcakey thing, that I would have this. And it did, it did what it needed to do, but I have found that, you know, my time with Lyra and smelling like that is a thing of the past. I don't really want to smell like that anymore. I think I just overdid it. Um, and I babied this bottle. This was like, has been in my closet, you know, in the dark. 
um, and it's it looks perfect and it's really old I think it's like six years old but I never wear it anymore and I didn't want to give it up because it's so hard to find you cannot find it it's impossible but somebody on Mercari is going to be very lucky because I just it makes no sense keeping a fragrance that I don't wear anymore so Tendre Madeleine is going to go Goodbye, boo-hoo, but it's time to move on. Ooh, what am I picking up? Oh, I know what this is. <laughs> okay, I don't know how this one survived so long, but it's time to say adieu to Rose and Dragon. Right, Sammy? <laughs> Sammy doesn't know how long, how I kept it this long either. Sammy's my little friend. She wanted to try a sample. I sent her. We do sample swaps all the time. And I was like, are you sure you want to try Rose and Dragon? And she tried it. Suffice to say she wasn't a fan. I This is just, mm, I don't know. I don't know why I kept it around. There was just every once in a while in a blue moon, I'd want to wear it. It's like this strange combination. There's rose. There's strawberry. There's some animalic notes. But uh, to me, this kind of smells like if you have a dog, and I have three, and whenever you like, so when they're dirty and you wash them, I mean, only dogs smell bad after you completely clean them. Like you completely clean this animal head to toe, and they smell worse than what they did before they went into the tub. But anyways, this kind of has this little bit of an animalic, funky, wet fur note accord something that I this nose could not get over and I think my friend Sammy smelt it the same so you know just doesn't jive with our chemistry I'm gonna have to say goodbye to Rose and Dragon I do love Carno Barcelona as a house this was the only one that really didn't work for me but we're gonna say bye 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 didn't work um, I don't think I have much left here the next one is by Lolita Lampica, and it is another one that I actually gave to my husband at the end of spring, beginning of summer, and he just said, you know, I really don't wear this, I really don't like it, and it's called Green Lover, sorry about that. And it's a very affordable, very inexpensive fragrance, and I think that this fragrance, like, people could like. Here's the problem. When we were traveling, and I can't remember the trip it was, we stayed in kind of a, like a snazzy little hotel, and they had their own, you know, they had their own um, shampoos and conditioners and this mouthwash. And the mouthwash was really nice. It was like a real fancy, minty, vanillic mouthwash. Here's the problem. This smells, you know, very, very, very similar to that mouthwash. So my husband was like, it just... It smells like mouthwash. I don't I don't want it. And it does. It kind of smells like mouthwash. Wash. It's minty. Um, it's clean. I think it has like juniper notes and mint notes. And it's very fresh. There's definitely some vanilla in here. Almost kind of reminds me a little bit of, of uh, Terry Mugler Ara. A little bit. Like a, a fresher version of it. But I just, yeah... I can't get over the that mouthwash memory and I think a lot of people could like it um, it's just not for our house so we're gonna say goodbye to green lover and oh oh yeah I have one more left so this one my last goodbye or my last pass is I'm not giving it away because or I'm not saying goodbye to it because I don't like it it happens to be Eau de Well by Diptyque this is a this is, in my opinion, one of the best vanillas for a beginner. Like somebody who doesn't like vanillas, is afraid of the vanilla note or vanilla fragrances, this is one of the best. It's just really good. It's a natural, woody vanilla. The problem is, is that I have um, Architects Club by Arquiste, and they are so, so similar. But I like Architects Club better. That it has a, it's a little bit brighter. There's lemon and juniper and angelica that kind of gives it some freshness. It's a brighter version. This one has more spices and like a, a tea note. And I just prefer me Architects Club. So they're so similar. I don't need both. There's a lot of redundancy between the two of them. So um, it's a, it's a great, it's a beautiful fragrance. I just never wear it because I always pull for the Architects Club, and you do not need both. 
Like they smell so similar, you just, it's one or the other. Having both is just silly. But anyway, so we're gonna say goodbye to Oduel, and this is the EDT. I have a bad habit of collecting or acquiring discovery sets that I do not discover. <laughs> I think I literally have 12, 12 to 15 discovery sets in my room that just sit there. And because I'm always testing out other fragrances, I don't get to explore my discovery sets. And I'm thinking about, you know, maybe exploring them on a video to force me to, you know, really try them. Um, one that I've already gone through all of them is, and I've had this for several months, it's by the House of Boho Boko. And they have a lot of really um, fun uh, fragrances and I've tried all of them. And if you want me to do a separate review, I'm happy to do that. The interesting thing is, is that the ones that I thought I would like, I didn't like. And the ones that I thought there's no way I'd like, just from their name, like, uh, let me see. Dark Vinyl, Musk, ugh, I didn't think I'd like anything that had the, 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 had the title Dark Vinyl, ew. But I liked it, and a lot of them that I thought I was going to like, I didn't like. So, um, yeah, interesting. If you want me to do a house over, overview of this one, I'm happy to. I don't know if there's anything that I loved enough to buy a full bottle. I've gone through all of these twice. So these are thinkers. Um, uh, essential parfums, I've had this for a couple months. Um, these are all very, very nice. I already have Divine Vanilla or Divine Vani, and I do love that one, it's great. Um, there are many, many nice ones in here. Nice Bergamot is great. I love Rose Magnetic. I think that is the next full bottle I would pick up. Um, they're all nice, but um, not a love, except for I really, really did enjoy Rose Magnetic. So um, there's that one. And I know I have another one. You know what? Um, this one... The House of Siage, I have a couple of discovery sets, and I think I left it up in my room, but I do have the um, the discovery set from Roja, the Essence line, and I went through all of that very extensively, tested them three separate times. Um, I don't think I'm going to do an overview of that, but I, they were nice but they're pricey. They're like $300 and they didn't not, if, if you're going to charge me $300, you better blow my socks off. I mean, it, it, you better just like light up my world. And they didn't. There was one that I really, really, really liked and I am going to get the full bottle um, in the Parfum and I have actually seen it on um, a, web, a, a legit website. I think it's Fragrance X for a decent price. So I'm thinking very strongly about getting that one. But um, anyways, so that was it. Pickups and passes. I hope that this did not go past the 30 minute mark. <laughs> but anyways, thank you for sticking around. Um, thank you for watching and um, I will see you for the next one.